my name is Natalie Nelson. I am the director and curator at the Pence. I've been working here a really long time. Um, when I tell kids this, they're like, oh my gosh, that's longer than I've been alive. Um, I hit 15 years this September. My name is Eileen Henry. I'm the assistant director, and I've been at the Pence since we first curated Rembrandt's show, or 18 years. Hi, my name is Katherine Schultz. I am the Education and Development Associate at the Pence, and I've been working here for almost four years now. Hello, my name is Jenna Matsubara. I am the Marketing Assistant here at the Pence Gallery, and I've been working here for a little bit over a year. I spend a lot of my time talking to artists, either you know, virtually on the phone via email, or I go out to their studios. I also have to do the business side of the pen, so I do the budget, I talk to staff, of course, I work with the board, um, I talk to volunteers. So a lot of it is trying to coordinate kind of the administrative side that people don't see. It can be anything, literally. It can be working on contracts, doing labels for shows, meeting with artists, uh, taking a look at art. Um, it runs the full gamut of anything and everything that you could expect in a gallery. Uh, lots of different things. Before COVID, it was a lot of events, classes, uh, different workshops, and I'm still doing that now, but virtually. Or it could be emails, meeting with artists, doing videos. Since I'm only here about once or twice a week, uh, coming to the Pence is my exciting job. Generally, when I come in, it's sort of like hanging out with friends and family. Everyone's just super friendly and I love my coworkers. I generally just do uh, computer work, uh, marketing all of our exhibits and activities and events on different social platforms and websites. My favorite part of my job is without a doubt um, working with artists. I love the way they can turn you know, nothing into something really interesting. And they always have just fun and interesting ways of looking at the world. So I enjoy trying to figure out their minds. It's a little bit like being a psychologist, at least I tell myself that. Um, and I try to just figure out how can I share their vision with other people. Meeting new artists and seeing new work, it is like having a birthday or Christmas or Hanukkah, you get to see something new every day and it's very, very exciting. My favorite part about my job is the people. I love meeting kids who are excited about art. I love meeting new artists, many of whom I really, really admire. And then also the staff here. It feels like a small family and my favorite part of the day is when I have lunch with everyone. I'd say my favorite part of this position is that over the last year, I've gotten a bit more familiar with the Davis art community and meeting artists um, who have exhibits here or who are visiting. And I also just love seeing our new shows and the different types of work that come through here. What's probably been most memorable for me, it's probably been the public art. Um, probably because that's such a creative process and so when I got here the building was new and the walls were blank outside and there was no sculpture except for one piece and um, so I worked with some artists to try to build that up and to beautify the area and that not only was really fun and creative and collaborative it was also extremely challenging um, and it made me really want to um, get back into my own art and Ultimately, it's something that I can leave for people that is long-lasting. So. We had an exhibit that Natalie um, was in charge of, and Chris DeWitt from San Francisco curated it. And he brought a fair amount of artists I had never heard of. And one of them was Chris Lieb. And from that show, I not only became a collector of Chris Lieb's, but also a very good friend. And we don't go... Uh, a week without emailing back and forth about art and uh, sharing all sorts of new triumphs over shading and color, etc. He is now in Berlin with his wife, but he is very gracious and he still sends me tips on how to improve my painting.
I think for me a memorable exhibit would be the exhibit that I got to curate here back in February. So it was right before we closed for COVID. We had a huge Friday uh, reception and it was the printmaking show that I got to curate. It was really cool to bring a lot of printmaking artists together that I admired and meet them. My favorite exhibit that I remember is Lynn Dow's exhibit. She's a sculptural artist and she makes all of her, all of her pieces out of home appliances or uh, like utensils, pots, dishes, and things like that. And when I saw her work, I just thought it was really incredible to see how she pieced all of these things together and somehow created a, like a force to be reckoned with. And there was so much motion and shape in her pieces, and I would recommend looking at her work. I went back to art making about five, six years ago, and I do a lot of found object sculpture. Um, I work with fiber and all sorts of interesting materials like wire and fabric. Um, and I'm still learning, so I feel like I'm, I'm kind of like an undergraduate. And I really appreciate the fact that art making is really hard and it's really nerve wracking and you feel vulnerable and you feel stupid most of the time. Um, but occasionally there are moments where you break through and you're just amazed at what you could actually accomplish. I am a ceramic artist. I'm one of the artists over at the Artery. I've been there for probably close to 30 years. But what I find that I love to do is not so much the function of creating the piece in terms of building it, but rather the illustration portion of it. So I enjoy painting more than I do sculpting. I do make art. Uh, I don't consider myself an artist. I feel like it's more of a hobby for me, but I do printmaking um, and I also like to do illustration. So I'm, I've been practicing lately with watercolor and gouache and I do portraits. Yes, I dabble in a bunch of different types of crafts. Um, right now I've been spending a lot of time working with small scale ceramics and every once in a while I paint. Um, if you come to our holiday market, I have some of my ceramics as well as hand-sewn cushions that I would definitely uh, recommend because they're super cute, um, but I like all sorts of crafting activities. When I think of people who inspire me, a lot of times it's a lot of women who are really amazing. So I look up to women who are just really leaders um, in their field, but who do it in a way in which they lead from like a really strong kind of positive space. Um, really, but it's, it's from a position of kind of caring and warmth and wanting to generate community. I think uh, just about anything. Um, inspires me. I think that when you speak in artistic dialogue you have a certain vision you can look at a tree and see shade and green and and that can inspire you. Um, in terms of artists I think that probably I've been influenced the most by Ralph Steadman, um, John Neal, uh, Ethel Mars, anybody from the early 1900s to about 1940 for illustration. So I would say Probably similar to what Eileen said. I am really inspired by lots of illustrators, so people like Arthur Rackham, Ida Althwaite, uh, Emily Winfield Martin, and I'm inspired by the artists I meet here too, and what they're creating, and also just friends and family. I wouldn't say I have any one specific a person or artist that I'm inspired by, but I definitely am motivated by the idea of being connected to art somehow throughout um, my life, whether it was a job or just a hobby. I feel like I was really lucky to get this position here at the Pence because I successfully found this connection to the art community. Um, and it's just something I love. <laughs> into going to this one museum in my youth and I, I would sit in front of this one piece which was called Split and it was this giant abstract painting and there were these giant things that were embedded in it like really sparkly objects and I was just fascinated by how globby the paint was. The things embedded in the paint really reminded me of kind of getting lost in your own little world.
And so I think that was the first time I, I really was like, wow, art is more than just, you know, a picture of a pretty place. Art can be something that you really ponder and really takes you to some place that is, is kind of hard to describe. I would have John Neal who illustrated all of the Oz books because for whatever reason I decided it would be a great idea to copy all of them. So for the last 11 months I have been painting Oz covers as close to true as possible that I can and I find that there are varying degrees of difficulty in these covers and I would sure love to sit down and say, John what were you thinking? So the type of art that I personally collect is probably art from the Victorian era. I really love old drawings, not necessarily by famous artists, but drawings from that era. And also I love sculpture too, probably because Eileen got me into ceramics and sculpture. So I love Julia Feld as an artist who's been here at the Pence and I have one of her pieces. Hopefully I'll have more in the future. I would have to say that if I were to step into a painting, I'd choose one of Salvador Dali's paintings. Um, I've always found surrealistic artwork quite interesting and intriguing, so his work is really odd but fun, so probably one of his works. 